Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for October 28th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Chocolate Day, First Responders Day, National Pitbull Awareness Day, Chucks and Pearls Day, and Czech Founding Day. So go ahead and get started. First with a centering breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our reading for today is Exodus chapter 34, verses 10, I'm sorry, verses 8 through 16. Listen for God's word to speak to you. And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. God said, I hereby make a covenant before all your people. I will perform miracles such as have not been performed in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of Adonai, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I command you today. See, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take care not to make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you are going, or it will become a snare among you. You shall tear down their altars, break their pillars, and cut down their sacred poles, for you shall worship no other god, because Adonai whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. You shall not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, for when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to their gods, someone among them will invite you, and you will eat of the sacrifice, and you will make wives from among their daughters for your sons, and their daughters who prostitute themselves to their gods will make your sons also prostitute themselves to their gods. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So our reading for today is um, another kind of troubling one, but it's rooted in a um, kind of a beautiful thing. And so it's complicated, right? As often it is. So just a reminder of the context. This is after um, the golden calf incident. God and Moses have been sort of negotiating back and forth um, about whether God is going to go with these people because they are stiff-necked and they are stubborn and they are hateful and they keep doing the things that they're not supposed to be doing. And God has shown the divine presence to Moses in an anthropomorphic sort of version of the story by seeing, uh, showing Moses God's back 
and in a much more sort of metaphorical way with this pronouncement of God's divine character that is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And because of this, Moses bows down in worship and once again asks, or asks in this version, probably more likely this, this particular sort of telling of the story that's been woven together with other ones. If we found favor in your sight, O Lord, come with us, be in our presence. One of the tips, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show this real quick. One of the tips that maybe this is from a different context is verse nine here. You have, O Lord. Okay. Um, then we have over, where's another place where it is? Here we have Lord in all capital letters. So you have Lord written in two different ways. And when that happens in, uh, especially the Hebrew scriptures, a trans English translation of the Hebrew scriptures, when it is Lord in all caps, that is the divine name of God. Um, I say Adonai, which is actually Lord in, in Hebrew. Um, because the divine name uh, among our Jewish siblings is not said out loud. But Lord is just a word that means one who is above me. So we suddenly switch from calling God Adonai, Lord, the divine name of God, and now it just uses Adonai, right? Um, but Lord, it's not actually the, the divine name of God. And so... That's a clue that this may be a different storyteller, just so you know, for that for that section at least. Um, so Moses says, you know, would you go with me? And the next part that we have in, in this scripture as it's put together is God saying, I'm gonna make a covenant with you. Before all your people, I will perform miracles such as you have not such as not have been performed in all the earth for any nation. And all the people among you who live shall see the work of Adonai, the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. I will go with you. Sorry, that was an end quote. I will, but God says, I will go with you. And I'm going to do things that are going to freaking blow your mind. You're not going to be able to understand them. I'm going to show my power among you. I'm going to do just amazing things that you could not imagine. Miracles. And then the narrative goes on to explain exactly what those miracles are going to look like. And this is where we start to get uncomfortable. Observe what I command to you, quote, observe what I command to you today. See, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. End quote. And we, especially we with white skin passing at least in whiteness, and the global West as ancestor or descendants of those who have colonized and who have been colonized ourselves, we hear this and we say, Yikes. Because we know that where this kind of rhetoric can go, it can be directed at this manifest destiny where we take over, where we commit genocide, where we either physically kill or we culturally kill whole people groups because we feel like it's our divine right. And we hear this and we know that these types of scriptures has been used for that type of action and we cringe and we wonder how is this, how could this possibly be good? And 
in no way to excuse the way that this scripture has been misused. We also might, it might be helpful to reframe things and hear it not from our sort of majority perspective, where it is deeply problematic and deeply harmful and has a history of being misused and weaponized, but hearing it from a marginalized standpoint. Here it is a word of indeed good news to a people who have been beaten down, who in the narrative have just been released from enslavement to Egypt, who in most of the time of their history have been the teeny tiny little country that is just overwhelmed by everyone else around them. Probably in its more final form, uh, a people who have been physically taken away from their land, who have now been allowed to go back in and have found that there's all sorts of other people there. This word that I will drive out these other people has a very different sound to it. This is what these people are hoping for. This is how you would they would um, want to see God is the God who gives them victory instead of being the ones on the under the boot of everyone else. Does that mean that this is, um, you know, in the same way a, a beautiful picture of who God is? As the the just previous passage, God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, who defeats your enemies, does that do those jive well together? No, they don't really. Especially as we read them through the context of the history of interpretation for this and passages like this. And so here in this, within this chapter, there is struggle. Within this chapter, we are getting very different pictures of who God is. For people long marginalized, for people who are under the boot of oppressors, a God who is strong enough to overcome your enemies is indeed good news. To a people who are the oppressors, who have all the privilege, this can very quickly switch from good news to permission. From a word of hope to a word of conquest. And so we must be cautious. The picture of a God who defeats our enemies is dangerous in the hands of those who regularly defeat enemies. And so we hear this afresh. We hear the hope for the people to which it was written. We hear hope, but also great caution as we read it today. We approach with humility and recognize that I and people who look and talk like me, have misused this against people who look and talk differently. We gather all of these things together, the complexity of what it means to reflect upon scripture as we consider what is God saying to us today. 
as we hear afresh what God is saying to us. A word of hope. A word uh, that those who would seek your harm for whatever reason do not have the final say. That the powers of sin and death and empire that are so deeply at work within our world are not the final authority. But that does not give us the permission to do that same thing, to oppress the oppressors. Take some time to consider these things. reflect, to pray, to meditate. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise. We give you our praise and thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and for your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. all creatures with whom we share the earth. Those whom we have loved and who have loved us. support and encouragement from others. Food and drink to share in your name. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for a God who is with us. as with those who are downtrodden and overcome and overwhelmed. We give you our cares and concerns, O God, because we know you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially we pray for Lutheran and Reformed churches. People who live in poverty.
those who are sick or suffering. Those who work for their healing. Comfort and peace for those who are dying. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Laura, Cameron's sister, who is in the ICU. For Amanda, a play school teacher who has suffered a loss. For the 2024 pledge campaign, Saved to Serve. For a smooth transition as the Mayfields move. For Gary, Sandy's daughter-in-law's father. for Beverly's granddaughter and Amy's granddaughter, for all those on our hearts and minds. To you, O oh God, we give up the burdens of this day, trusting your love and mercy. To you, O oh God, we surrender ourselves trusting our risen Lord to lead us always in the way of peace, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now let us cast our anxiety on the Lord who cares for us. The God of all grace will restore, strengthen, and support us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Oops. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Uh, you can join us every day on YouTube. You can listen on Substack or wherever you listen to Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're not finding it in your podcast thing, let me know and uh, I'll work on that. And you can sign up for a daily email on Substack. All of those links are below. Our readings today came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our, um, with my own little tweaks. And uh, the liturgy comes from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. You can go to our website for more information, johncalvinchurch.org. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for joining me. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.